booktube welcome back to my channel a few days ago i went to the barnes and noble bookstore and i saw some new releases that i'm considering reading i don't know too much about these books but i filmed some clips where i did a page 112 tag for these three new releases and i'm going to share those video clips with you now and at the end i'm going to ask you to vote which of these three books you'd like to hear me talk about so which of these three books i should add to my may tbr so stick around for the footage from barnes and noble so I'm at Barnes and Noble and this is in Long Island and here's a new release table, at least one of them. There are several new release tables in the store, but this is the one that has some books that I think I'm most interested in. The first book that caught my eye is The Editor by Stephen Rowley. This is the author who wrote Lily and the Octopus, which I own and still haven't read, but I like books about books. So I like that this synopsis is about a struggling writer getting his big break so let's see what other people are saying about the editor. So he's got blurbs from Taylor Jenkins Reid, author of Daisy Jones and the Six, Chloe Benjamin, author of The Immortalists, Julie Klan, author of The Stars in Our Eyes. I haven't read any of those books yet though. Let's see what the first paragraph says. Quarantine, a novel by James Smale. Okay, so this is the novel that the main character is writing. The room was warm, too warm, Russell thought, to share with a dead body, but no one seemed concerned. Guests wore their coats cinched tight at the waist, as if taking them off would obligate them to stay. In the back of the room, a giant silver percolator was brewing coffee, and there was another kettle for tea. His mother, having had three cups black, did laps around the room like the women who exercised inside the pyramid shopping center, mall mallers they called them, somehow connecting with anyone in her path and simultaneously avoiding everyone. Okay, let's go to page 112. Bill Clinton. A photo of Clinton shaking John Kennedy's hand as part of some boys' curriculum for future leaders splashes across the screen. It was smart of the campaign to include it, to tie Clinton and JFK together. Apparently, I met him in the Rose Garden. Have you met him recently? I clarify. Oh, yes. I can picture him now as someone who idolized her husband, much as my family did, coming to her to seek her blessing, to kiss the ring as if she were an imposing godfather. I'm watching this pageant with someone who still holds incredible sway over democratic politics. And I imagine it's for other men, straighter men, like watching the World Series with, I don't even know how to finish that comparison. It's like watching the Academy Awards with Katherine Hepburn. Straight men will just have to extrapolate. Do you like him? Do you like him? Jackie lobs the question right back at me. I do, I admit, hoping against hope this is not a wrong answer. We watched the video for a few minutes more before Jackie says, I've papered his war chest on several occasions. I look up at Jackie with a curious expression. That's not a euphemism, she protests when she reads my face. Then she laughs. Well, I guess it is for giving him money, but not for anything else. When the video fades, Bill Clinton appears on stage and gets a rock star's reception. He's a natural, I say, a little too natural. I know she's heard the rumors of infidelity. They address them on 60 Minutes. I puzzle over how much of her first husband she sees, why she chose to support him, and how much she sympathizes with Hillary. Whereas she suffered indignities in silence, the Clintons give joint interviews. The job of political good wife, now even harder. So that was book one, the editor by Stephen Rowley. I think that gives us a good sense of what the book is about and how it's gonna be written. Let's see about book two. This one looks interesting. There's a word for that by Sloane Janin. I don't think I've ever heard of this author before. How many pages is in this one? Three hundred and seventy-three pages. Okay. It's an interesting cover. I like the graphics. Let's see what the synopsis says. A hilarious and moving chronicle of a wildly flawed family that comes together in rehab of all places. Okay, let's check this one out. Let's go for the first paragraph, part one. I like descriptions. I like books that starts with definitions. 
So this seems to be multiple perspective. Janine, New York. Janine was lost. The smell of bleach and sweat followed her through the empty halls. Okay. Part two. Okay. This looks interesting. Let's go to page 112. This just has two paragraphs, but let's see what it says. Stay calm, she heard Coach Lindstrom say while someone wiped at her face with a wet towel and a gloved hand scooped something out of her mouth. Just breathe, Haley, breathe. She tried to protest, but she couldn't talk. Her mouth felt like a hot sponge. She pushed her tongue against her teeth and felt nothing but mush. Haley wanted whoever was in charge to just let her die. She didn't want to live without teeth and a nose. She tried to tell them to just let her die, but she couldn't talk, and it's not like anybody ever listened to her anyway. Well, that was really interesting, but I feel like maybe we should read the next page as well. So let's go. Bunny, are you there? It's Sam. Pick up the phone. Enough of the self-flagellation routine. The person hunting me down. You're not returning my calls. Everyone is worried. Henry's worried. Please, Bun, call me. Self-flagellation routine? Bunny snorted. To hell with you, Sam. You think I'm sorry? You think I'm feeling apologetic? That I give a crap what everyone is saying? She asked the empty air around her, lighting a cigarette. Still, she had to resist picking up the phone. Was Henry really worried or was Sam manipulating her? Bunny hadn't left the back rooms of her flat in the days since the party. She hadn't spoken to anyone but Bettina. She hadn't read a newspaper, turned on the computer, or answered the phone. Ian was the only person that Bunny was feeling a bit sorry about upsetting. He must be furious with her. Well, he should have known better than to tell Sam anything. He should have known better than to count on Henry. He should have known better than to throw her a surprise party and invite Jean Sparrow. He'd get over it. He could patch up his ego with a percentage on her next book, which she just decided was going to be her last. She was done with Henry Holter. Her hero would go back and shag Valet Winwick. Oh, another book about a writer. Okay, so here's another candidate. I mean, I'm not really loving the expletives, but a lot of books have that. And let's see who blurbs this one. Okay, so this book has a blurb by Gretchen Rubin, who wrote The Happiness Project, which I really like, but I don't see how that really relates to this novel. Quite a few of these are memoirists, so, okay. Well, we're gonna call this a candidate as book number two. Let's find book number three, The Mother-in-Law. <laughs> the Mother-in-Law sounds interesting. I like the title. I like this cover with someone sitting inside looking out. Let's check this one out. Hepworth turns up the heat, a winner for fans of Leanne Moriarty and Megan Abbott. Leanne Moriarty is one of my favorite women's fiction writers, so I think I'm already sold. From the moment Lucy met her husband's mother, she knew she wasn't the wife Diana had envisioned for her perfect son. Yeah, this sounds like a classic mother-in-law story. Let's check out the first paragraph. Ah, the book is dedicated to the author's mother-in-law who she would never dream of murdering. Okay, okay. First paragraph says, this is from Lucy's perspective. I'm folding laundry at my kitchen table when the police car pulls up. That's quite an arresting first line. The poor girl is so desperate for a baby, it's practically written on her skin. Her polycystic ovaries make it tricky to conceive, but there must be things she can do to help. She's probably already doing things, but she won't tell me and I won't ask. Instead, we'll just be together for a little while, not saying anything at all. Would you like to stay for dinner? I ask. No, she says, I need to get home to Patrick. Patrick is welcome to join us too, I say dutifully. In the early days, Nettie and Patrick would come to dinner often. They'd retire to the den after dinner and Patrick would mix drinks and smoke cigars with Tom. Patrick always seemed so comfortable that for a while, I'd worried we'd never have a night to ourselves. But a year or two in, he'd stop coming, save for Christmas and family occasions. No, she says, I'll go home. You know, if something is bothering you, you can talk to me about it, I say. I might not be the best conversationalist, but I'm not a bad listener. Nettie looks at me, and for a long moment, I think she might cry. Nettie's not a crier. She hasn't been since she was a very little girl. But a few seconds pass, and Nettie regains her composure, sits straight. Thanks, Mom, she says, but everything is fine. Okay. At first, I thought that these two female characters were friends, but now that I see mother and daughter, that's interesting. So we're going to get a comparison of mother-daughter and mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. I like that. And this one doesn't have any reviews from any other authors, but 
there's some praise for other books by this author so i guess this is just a first printing but i'm intrigued so this we're going to call this book number three so i'd love to hear from you down below whether you want me to read the editor there's a word for that or the mother-in-law by sally hepworth And so those are three novels that I'm considering reading. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which of these three books you'd like to hear me discuss. And I'll add it to my May TBR, which means I'm going to have to go back to the bookstore and buy a new book. No problems there. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know whether you want me to read book one, book two, or book three. And whichever book gets the most votes, I'll add it to my May TBR and read it. And you'll hear a review coming up in an upcoming Closer Book video. So thanks for watching. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know whether book one, two or three i use other fingers earlier book one two or three and we'll talk down there so until next time happy reading